Hey guys, it's Neil again from Heart of Texas Armory, and today I want to bring you guys a video review of this very impressive timepiece from Phoebus. This is the Phoebus Eagle Ray, and this is a watch I've been super excited for, probably since it was initially announced about a year ago, and this watch is one of those rare times when, when it's finally released, it actually lives up to the hype, or in my opinion, might even exceed the hype. It is quite spectacular. So here it is sitting on my 6 and 7 8 cents wrist looking really nice. And what we'll do like in all my video reviews is we'll zoom in. We'll have the specs show up and we'll talk about the highlights of this watch. And then we'll wrap the video review up with the positives and negatives. So join me today as we talk about this very impressive timepiece, the Phoebus Eagle Ray. All right, guys, we're zoomed in here so we can talk about this watch in a little more detail. So let's go ahead and slide the watch over and we'll have the specs pop up on the left-hand side of the screen. And we'll start off with case diameter. So the Phoebus Eagle Ray here has a case diameter of 41 millimeters. And 41 millimeters is probably my favorite case diameter size. And I feel it's gonna work with most wrist sizes. Uh, even if you have a really large wrist, you can still pull off a 41. Or if you had a really small wrist, this would probably work okay for you too. Uh, very similar, of course, to a 40 millimeter case size. So uh, something like a Rolex Submariner size, that's what this is gonna feel like. So great choice going with the 41 millimeter case diameter. Lug width here for your straps, bands, and bracelets. You have 20 millimeters, and that's a very common size. So that's a good choice as well. Lug to lug from that point here to this point up here. You're looking at only 47 millimeters, so fairly short overall, uh, and that's a good thing too. So even if you feel like normally that 41 millimeter case diameter is a little large for you, having that short lug to lug here uh, is going to let you probably pull this watch off still. So I love that it's that short, that 47 just wears great on the wrist as you saw earlier. Case thickness, you're looking at only 13.2 millimeters, so fairly thin for a full dive watch. A lot of dive watches these days are closer to 15 or even thicker, uh, and, and anything under 15 millimeters is a positive in my book when it's a dive watch. So 13 millimeters, I think that's a great choice. The weight here, sitting on this current rubber strap here from Phoebus, you're looking at 98 grams. So a decent weight to it, feels good on the wrist. It's not too heavy though, but it, you can definitely feel it is a quality timepiece. Now your movement, you're looking at a Miyota 9015. Now this is a bit of an upgrade in my opinion over you know like a Seiko NH35. So if you look at the sweep of the hand, you should notice a little bit smoother sweep because this one here is a high beat movement at 28,800 beats per hour. This movement also has a 42 hour power reserve, which is nice. The crystal here is a dome sapphire, which is a very nice touch. And it does have a ceramic bezel insert, which is also nice. Uh, water resistance here at this timepiece is 300 meters. So this is a full dive watch. You could go scuba diving with it. You could, of course, snorkel or swim with it all day. No problems at all. And the last thing we'll mention here is the price. So at $359, this is the, to date, the most expensive Phoebus released um, watch model. But to me, it's... It's still an affordable watch because of the specs that we just talked about. This is a very impressive timepiece for under $500. So $360 basically, you know, it's, it's getting a little pricey when you compare it to other Phoebus models, but I still feel you get a lot of value for your money with this timepiece. So what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and uh, move over to some talking points, and then we'll wrap this video review up with positives and negatives. So we'll start off the talking points here by discussing the case. Now, this is a dive watch, of course, so the case construction is machined fully out of 316 stainless steel. And we do have brushed surfaces throughout the entire watch. Along the top here, we do have nice radial brushing in a circular pattern. These sides are linear brush from top to bottom, and the back is also radial brush. So the entire watch, again, being brushed, I like that. You know, this is a tool watch, a dive watch. Brushing is going to help, you know, mask dings and scratches you might pick up over, over use. So I like that it's brushed. I know some of you guys do like your polished watches, but uh, to me, I think it was a good choice going with a fully brushed case. Now the dial is really nice. You can see it is a nice glossy black dial with applied embassies throughout. 
Uh, and they're all fully loomed. And of course, the bezel here is also loomed. Now, the black model here, the PY017C, is what you're seeing here. And it is very nice. And it is my personal favorite of the three. But they do have two other models. You should be seeing them pop up right now that feature a gradient from blue to black. So those are also really nice. But to me, the black one here uh, is pretty much the winner. Uh, it just looks so classy and vintage looking. So I really like that. Uh, the bezel, we do have a really nice 120 click bezel. Uh, you can hear it here. The clicking action is really, really nice. It's smooth. It's very clicky and mechanical, and there's absolutely no back play. So it's really well done. And of course, it lines up perfectly. So no problems with the, the lineup of the bezel insert. And speaking of the insert, we do have a ceramic insert here. So that's also really nice for this price point. The ceramic is just going to hold up the scratches better than aluminum insert will. So uh, I think that's a nice positive. Now your crystal, we do have a dome sapphire and it's not a huge dome, but there is a little bit of a dome. Hopefully you can see that on camera and it does add to a little bit of a distortion effect when you see it in the right angles, which I like, uh, but it's not as, the dome is not as pronounced as some other watches that I've looked at. So, um, you know, maybe if you're not a fan of Dome Sapphire, this one might still be okay for you because it's not as pronounced. The movement here, we've already talked about it earlier in these specs, but we do have the Miota 9015, which is a high beat mo movement that's very reliable, uh, accurate, of course, and it does feature the higher beat count at 28,800 beats per hour. So you do get a little bit smoother of a sweep of the, the seconds hand there, which is a nice touch. The loom on this watch is really, really nice. You should be seeing that loom shot pop up right now. And guys, this is simply the best loom I've seen from Phoebus to date. And their watches just keep getting better and better in regards to construction and also loom. So this loom here is going to work for you uh, throughout the night. If you charge this thing up, it's going to work great for you. Uh, you're never going to have a problem reading this. Even after eight, nine hours, it's still readable. So... Uh, really good job on the loom here. So I'm very impressed with that. Now we'll talk about the straps. So they do provide you two straps with this watch. The one you see here, which is the rubber tropical strap. Uh, it's also, it's really nicely done. Comfortable to wear. You know, rubber straps are not my favorite, but uh, it is well done. You can see it has a nice texture effect on it. The back is also textured and it is marked Phoebus here at the top which is a nice touch. And they do provide you with a, a second strap here, a leather strap you can see right here. Uh, very comfortable as well, but uh, to me, I like that rubber one better than the leather. And in fact, if this was my watch, I would probably purchase a bracelet of some type for this watch because I think it would just look spectacular on a bracelet. But it is nice you do get these two dive, uh, this, these two straps, one for, for diving and of course one for just around the town, the leather. Uh, so that's a nice touch. But overall, you know, this is probably the best Phoebus to date, in my opinion. You know, I think they really produced a fine timepiece here. Uh, it, it looks good. It functions great. And, you know, they just keep getting better and better, just like I mentioned before. So let's wrap this video review up by talking about some of the positives and negatives. So with the positives, you're looking at an exceptional build quality. You can see, you know, just everything about this watch just looks nice. So, uh, you have incredible specs. You've got the sapphire crystal. You got the ceramic insert. You got the Miota 9015 movement. I mean, these specs are just really, really nice. So, uh, Phoebus just continues to impress me. Uh, every new watch they come out with seems to get better and better. So, uh, I'm really excited to see what they come out with in the future. Uh, this watch here being almost a perfect watch, in my opinion. So, uh, if they can beat this one with their next couple of watches, you know, they're, they're going to really become a major player in the micro industry here in the, you know, in regards to watches. I do like the, the vintage looks this watch has, this watch has too. Uh, I tend to like watches that look more, you know, old fashioned, not old fashioned, but just look more vintage, say seventies or eighties dive watches. And this one here, uh, has that look going for it. So I really like that about it. The loom is also a positive. You saw that earlier. Uh, this is one of the first watches that I can honestly say, you know, the loom is going to work throughout the night, no problem. The only other watch that I've had that has as good loom as this has been like a Seiko. 
Uh, Y'all all know, know the Seiko Loom is, is probably the best in the market, but uh, this is getting pretty dang close here, guys, to Seiko quality of Loom. Uh, and the last thing I'll mention here, it has a really good set of specs for the price. So uh, the price is higher than most other Phoebus's, but you know, all these things we've talked about, you know, it's still an amazing value here. Uh, I think it's just a fantastic watch. Now, the negatives, there's not a lot of them. You know, there's very few with this timepiece. I had to really think about it to really uh, find some things to, to talk about here. So the really the only thing I'll mention is the the rotor. So being an automatic watch and a Miyota, they're kind of known for loud rotors. And this watch here, it, it has that for sure. So you should be you should be seeing a or hearing a sound clip pop up right now that has the rotor spinning so you can see what it sounds like. So hopefully you heard that little uh, sound clip there. Uh, so definitely the, the rotor is is a negative. Um, you're not going to notice it all the time, but there's just occasions where you would you know, move your wrist really fast and then stop it, you're going to hear that rotor. So this is kind of a trait of Miyota's and I wish, you know, Miyota would, would fix that so their rotors aren't quite as loud. But uh, again, kind of a nitpick, but I will mention that as a negative. And then the last thing I'll mention here, the, the last negative, because there's really not much I can complain about this watch. Uh, for the $359, I really wish they would have provided a steel bracelet. I think with a steel bracelet, this watch would be without a doubt, probably the best timepiece you could purchase for under a thousand dollars. So it does come with the two straps, you know, the leather and this tropical rubber strap here. But uh, if Phoebus would have came out with some type of, of steel bracelet, I think it would have been just about perfect. Now, the good news is it is 20 millimeter lug width here. So you should be able to find a, a, a steel bracelet if you wanted. But for that price point of $360, I do wish it would have came in the box with a steel bracelet. But that's really the only negatives I have for this watch. You know, overall, it is simply a, an awesome watch. This watch here I received uh, from Aaron Dunlap. It's on a watch tour, so I'll be sending it out to the next guy here soon. Uh, but definitely this is my favorite Phoebus to date, and I'm most likely going to go purchase one of these now because uh, I really don't want to give it up. You know, it's just that good. So, uh, but I have to send it out. Of course, this is not my watch. So, uh, but I will mention, you know, I'm probably going to be buying one of these because, you know, it just checks all the check marks for me. Uh, I love the size. I love the specs it has, you know, the overall looks. It's the complete package. So overall, you know, I give this two huge thumbs up here. This is a amazing watch. Uh, definitely Phoebus is best to date, in my opinion. And I'm, like I mentioned before, I'm really excited to see what they come out with next. So hope you guys enjoyed this video review. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'll do my best to answer them. Y'all guys take care. I'll catch you on the next one.